Welcome to this James the Bike Guy where today we're taking a look at a bike that proclaims to be able to be the one bike to do it all. A bike that's going to be able to allow you to ride to work on Monday, go for a fast and fun fitness ride with friends on Wednesday, and then be loaded up with gear for a full weekend adventure. So this bike in front of us is the 2022 Salsa Journeyer and this is a brand new revised version of their previous Journeyman and we're gonna go into the frame features and designs, talk about the part spec that's on this, and see if this bike can live up to the claim that it's a one bike to do it all. So if this kind of thing is interesting to you, stick around and consider subscribing while we check out this bike. The 2022 Salsa Journeyer is a pretty neat and updated bike for 2022. Now, I've taken a look and I've got a link down in the description below to the previous generation Journeyman frame, but this new, model the journeyer kind of carries on the legacy of what the journeyman had with more capability more inclusivity and even more frame size options to allow all different riders to get into this bike and the ethos of this particular bike is that it's going to be an affordable way to get some of the performance and capability that you get from salsa's gravel bikes like their warbird but all wrapped up into a package of capability now here the first thing to talk about is going to be the 6061 T6 aluminum frame. This is a pretty nice looking alloy frame. Although it's fairly basic in some of the tubing shape, what it does allow for is internal cable routing and lots of pack mounts to be added to it that we'll check out in a bit. And then this frame is used across the salsa lineup from low to high end. This one being the least expensive at $999, at least in May of 2022. And up front, is going to be their alloy fork. This particular fork is going to be the fantail fork, which has a bit of a, a blade shape to it. It's quick release, both on the front as well as the rear of this bike, but it's going to have a three pack mount on it. Also has internal mounts to be able to run fenders and that sort of thing onto the front and crazy tire capability up front, being able to fit up to a 700 by 56 millimeter tire or 650B by 2.3 inches. Now that tire clearance is carried onto the back of the bike as well. Maybe not quite as crazy of a size, but you can actually run up to a 700 by 50 millimeter in back or a 650B by 50 millimeter. So that means this bike is dual wheel size capable. So if you were wanting to use this for that commute or fitness ride, you could go down to say like a 32 millimeter tire on these 700C wheels, but then have a massive bike packing 650B fat tire setup for weekend adventures. The other cool thing for weekend adventures, you do have, of course, bento box dual mount up top. You then have a dual mount at the top of the down tube and then a triplicate mount towards the bottom of the down tube underneath the down tube of course another set of mounts and then a triplicate mount here on the seat tube and all that together is going to allow for a ton of different frame and bag options to go on to the front and then out back that internal cable routing pops up to the acolyte rear derailleur we'll get into in a bit but you've got rack and fender mounts out back as well. This is a 27 two millimeter diameter seat post and it is internally cable routed to be able to run a stealth dropper. Along with that stealth dropper, threaded bottom bracket on this rig for a reliable bottom bracket setup. And then it has some more modernized geometry. Now compared to the previous generation, essentially what's happened is it's gotten a longer top tube and a slacker head tube along with the addition of a lower bottom bracket, which allows this bike to have a more stable feel and ride a bit more like their gravel road bikes. And those geometry updates also allow for the three smaller sizes to have a bit more capability for smaller riders. And it's nice to see the super wide range of sizing that the Journeyman comes in. Part spec on this bike is gonna be consistent with a bike that you'll get right at that $1,000 mark. So here we've got an aluminum 31.8 handlebar with an aluminum stem. I do like that this has a bit of a back sweep to it. So for long days in the saddle, this is gonna give a nice position to be in. Comes with some round style grips on the bike. This is a place where if it were my own, I might upgrade that to an ergonomic style grip instead. But in back is going to be the WTB Volt saddle in the medium width on a 27.2 aluminum seat post. That seat post, either swap it to a dropper post in the future or a nice carbon seat post would help smooth out the ride a little more. And then the drivetrain is pretty sweet. So this is running MicroShift's new Acolyte rear derailleur system. 
This is an eight speed clutched rear derailleur that operates through a nice wide range 12 to 42 tooth cassette. That's a super wide cassette range on an eight speed drivetrain along with a clutched rear Acolyte derailleur. That means that it's gonna keep the chain nice and taut, nice and quiet, as well as be able to run on this narrow wide chain ring up front without needing a chain guide. Pretty cool setup on the bike. I love seeing this coming with a one by ratio. The gearing is definitely still gonna allow some pretty good climbing out of it, but it may lose out a bit on some of the higher speed sections just because that front 42 chain ring is paired up only to a 12 tooth out back. So the high end speed might be a little slacking, but the 42 out back and 40 means it's less than a one to one gear ratio. Now connecting those pedal strokes to the road is via some WTB STI 23 rims. These are a 23 millimeter internal width rim, J-bend spokes to quick release hubs on the front and the rear. And then they're connected up via the 38 millimeter wide Terravale Washburn tires. This is a pretty cool tire because it connects up some smooth rolling center line with some tread on the outsides to be able to make the tire a bit more capable so that you could use it on road really well, but still have enough grip for going off trail too. The last thing to talk about of the system is gonna be the mechanical disc brakes. So here we've got a mechanical lever going down to a Tektro mechanical disc brake. This is a single sided caliper clamping down on a 160 millimeter rotor. Well, now that we've taken a look at the features and designs of this 2022 Salsa Journeyer, let's go ahead and find out what it weighs. The actual weight of the 2022 Salsa Journeyer in size large in the Acolyte build is 26.4 pounds. Thanks so much for joining me on this adventure, checking out the 2022 Salsa Journeyer. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. While you're at it, be sure to hit the like button and hit subscribe if you haven't already, as well as browse the channel for more videos like this to check out as well.